Welcome to a new test and teardown video. <laughs> Look at this fantastic old wooden case full of dirt and stuff. And it is very, very heavy. It's actually 16 kilos. Oh, yeah, look at that. There's even a locking thing. So when you open the lid, it stays open. So this is a wave meter type R502. And it says even here a little bit more. What does it say? Universal wave meter model R502 and we see some different frequency ranges. Mika cycle look at that. Kilo cycles all the way to 480 mega cycles. Wow. What is that? It's surprise frequency la 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 la. So we got some L E one A is that what is that? I need to have a big, better look at that. Standard telephone and cables. All right, so it's from England. Of course, there is a very bizarre smell inside this unit. Oh, it's a flippity-flabbity on and off. When the gear read out and then that's the meter so i think it was this one yeah so is this this is the resonant coil aha uh -huh. h so this is the 110 to 230 and then there's a connector i wonder what is in here well, we got all of them from A to J. Yeah, they're all here. We, we even got a new lamp down here. I don't know exactly how you pull this up. So maybe there's only one tube in this and there's another possibility for another spare one. And I figured out where this smell is coming from. And that is all those plates. Here's even a... Let's look at this. So that's all the frequency ranges. And we even got operating instructions, plug in the coil and yada yada yada. I'm gonna go and play a li little bit with this if it works. Well, what ba battery? Really? Oh no, is this battery powered? So there's probably a sealed metal box in the back. Ooh, calibration. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this is coil A. Okay, see, let's just take. And this is, of course, this is where the smell is coming from. Those boards are made of pertinax or some material like that. And it stinks absolutely terrible. But anyway... I think this is how it works. Coil A. And what is the dial is reading? And what are we looking at here? Is this the frequency, right? I don't know exactly how to use this. But it's looking like a three-dimensional map. Right, we've got some different numbers here, some different numbers here, and we got we're reading out here a how how the heck is this working? 
I haven't figured that out yet. But that is interesting. They are really, really smelly. So, oh, and anyway, here are some really, really funny things. So there is a radio transmitter type of this and that. The R502, that is this one, right? I don't understand exactly what this is. So that would be different. Ah, oh, that would be different. Radio frequencies. Of the, and they are this, uh, this killer cycles and... Wow, look at that. So frequencies that uh, is going to be used from 1st of May 1953 at 3 a.m. Danish time. And then those frequencies, blah, 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 blah. And isn't that just amazing? So this, and he says, those frequencies you cannot use after 1st of May 1953. So they're changing frequencies of all those radio stations. So anyway, this unit is, is very easy to date because it must have been before 1953. It is that simple because we got this document here, right? <laughs> I think I'm going to keep that document. Oh, some hand writing something here. I don't know, let's look at the different. I think we should try and lift up this unit and have a look. So now the unit is up and we can have a look at this radio tube. It is really, really old. And there's a funny wire sticking up here and it's clearly marked. So you can see it. I don't know exactly why. I'm going to put it back here. So let's look at the unit here. I don't see any connectors for anything other than this. This is where the magic coil goes. What the heck is going on here? And then there's no, there's no, there's no connectors anywhere. So it's battery operated and it is definitely heavy. And it looks like you're supposed to open it from the front. Right. Okay, so let's try and open it. There's definitely some loose items in here. So we're in, but first let's look inside the case. What is that? Sand? It is made in one casted aluminium piece and here is of course our one tube see the test switch connects ground from the circuit to chassis and also to the battery what you see here is actually a one cell battery that is completely, completely, completely in pain. Oh my God, that is as bad as you can probably imagine. This battery was forgotten here since 1953. Isn't that amazing? Oy, oy, oy. I'm gonna try and open this. So if this is how it looks here, right? 
And you can even see there's some rust corrosion here. This, ooh, this is sick, this aluminium. So this is aluminium, this is steel. Wow, look at that. So it could have been sealed. Ah, that is what they said. A seal on the back side. If you open this, you can ruin the, uh, the calibration. So this, so look at that screw. So this is a seal for the calibration. There's also a hole here. So there was a seal between those two. How amazing. So we're not supposed to go in here, huh? Definitely we are. <laughs> Have you ever seen a battery this corroded? Oh my god. It is just completely dissolved. I need to go and clean my fingers. See here? Yikes. Oh, maybe there's something written on this. So the tube is out, the battery is out. I tried to unscrew everything here so I could clean this up. But this screw is not going anywhere at all. I think this is going to work, right? Just went shopping for something to clean this up. See, this is clearly a low voltage tube. Look at the distances in here, right? There's also a directly heated tree out. Look at that. So that is what it is. I tried to clean it. It's a little bit difficult to clean. I don't know what kind of tube this is. There is no numbers on anything and also not on the spare tube. See, I'm about ready to power this up. 1.4 volts here and I'm ready to put in the tube and let's see what happens see I cleaned up everything here and sprayed some aluminium sink spray after all the cleaning cleaning so now it is nice and shiny wow isn't that amazing so it's easy to restore this well easy and easy <laughs> I had to sanded and uh, using files and using all sorts of stuff difficult uh, and one of the screws actually broke in here but the other one I just put in from the inside to uh, make sure that I didn't get any dust and crap in here so let's look a little bit on the inside this is the connector for the inductor or the resonator or whatever it is the pickup part and then there is this big variable capacitor and there's a fixed capacitor as well look how nicely this is made and then there's only one the wire going to the tube and look at that how it is connected so the two wires to the tube like that so that will be the meter and two resistors that is all there is in this instrument we got the on off switch and the test switch and the test switch goes to ground the battery is the black one it's already uh, already connected to chassis and the red one is the plus battery and it is also going via switch and directly around the switch with different holes in here isn't that just cute and see here is also a ground connection to the tube like that maybe I should try and make a schematic of this but let's see what happens all right so the tube is in we got 1.5 volts connected and this is the filament supply 78 milliamps i didn't turn on the signal generator yet uh, the cable for our, uh, from the signal generator goes to just some random windings 
on the coil. I also got a scope nearby here just to see what is going on. So here's a funny thing that I found. Test measures the battery voltage. So that's all there is to it. 1.5 volts is here. Easy, easy. So that's nice to know. So now it's on and it is working. And this is the, the E-coil. And the frequency range for the E-coil is 750 to 1500 kilohertz. However, I don't think that is uh, correct. Uh, because look, here it says, so this is the frequency here, right? So I don't understand exactly what is going on, but and it's also a little bit weird to figure out how do you read those curves. Isn't that a funny? So this is 2200 and I input 2200. Let's see, Let's see what happens. We got a lot of reading here and see if I, oh, I can just grab here, see? Whoa. So it's very selective and that is great. So let's put this for maximum readout. See. What I think we need to do is, of course, go to maximum readout, and there is a zero and a ten. I don't understand exactly what that is, but I guess zero is what we need to go for, right? So this is 80 and 90. Okay, so 90 on the dial. So this is the dial, and the dial reading here is here, right? So this is 90, or 98.2 is 2200. So that means the frequency is right isn't that amazing and it even says something here about here 1950 something i don't know if you can see this but it's difficult to see lots of notes about what is uh, correct and what is not correct all sorts of frequencies and all sorts of dials and oops those are not right and you need to use this curve instead and that's fantastic so it's probably been sent in for calibrations and they added some lines here to make it read more correctly. So, so this is all it does. It measures signals that you put into it. There is no oscillator. The tube is just an amplified detector. It drives the, the tube. And uh, there's no signal coming out of this. It's only a field that you need to put into it. So it's a frequency counter. <laughs> and you can even, if you have a, a harmonic, you can even measure the level of the harmonics by using the style, right? So it's quite amazing to see it works. Frequency measurement unit from 1953 and it is working, yay! Oh yeah, it was me who was wrong about the E because that is from 1.4 to 2.9, so it's perfect for 2.2 megahertz. And yeah, if you read the operating instructions, it's clear that I'm doing exactly the right. Place a wave meter near radiation source, and then rotate the dial onto maximum deflation. And note, dial end of the corresponding frequency is the relevant calibration chart, exactly. So, I think it's fantastic. Should change the valve or battery. Okay. Of course, we needed to have a little look inside the detector coil. And this is the E coil. It's really, really beautiful made. So, this is ceramics. Look at that, huh? Yeah, really, really beautiful. And this is, of course, made to pick up as much signal as possible because of this huge diameter here, right?